Welcome to day two of Innovation Week. My name is Carrie Lopez. I'm the Director of Strategic Initiatives at the University Design Institute here at ASU, one of the many offices helping to organize this amazing event. And the, the theme of today is all about having the right supplies for a journey. And while we all might be lamenting and mourning a little bit our inability to take physical journeys right now, the same principles apply to journeys of the mind. Um, for example, the gear that you would need to summit Mount Everest would be very different than what you'd pack if you're going snorkeling on the beach. And the, the same um, decisions apply when you're thinking about an innovation journey. You might also have something unexpected come up and you have to use tools in new and different ways than you expected. Our keynote speaker today is a master at the mashup. She can merge together art, technology, science, creativity, history, and heart to reimagine old approaches and make new techniques. Diana Ayton Shanker is the CEO of the Leonardo ISAST, which stands for International Society of Arts, Science, and Technology. She's the executive director of the ASU Leonardo Initiative here at ASU. And she's a professor of practice at not just one, but two of our schools, the School for the Future of Innovation and Society and the School of Arts, Media and Engineering. She has many accolades to her name, uh, not least of which is she was named one of the top 25 leading women changing the world by President Bill Clinton and was featured among the 31 inspiring, or, uh, 31 inspiring women in nonprofit management. I will not read her biography. I encourage you to do so. It is posted on the website, but needless to say, she is an extraordinary leader and visionary, and we are honored to have her here to kick off Innovation Week Day 2. Um, we are going to learn from her about reimagining everything through the five C's of creative innovation, and I encourage you to post questions in the Q&A, and we will have some time for questions later. With that, Diana, I turn the virtual stage over to you. Well, good morning, everyone, and good evening for those in different time zones. Thank you so much, ASU, for welcoming me to welcome everyone to day two of Innovation Week. It is truly an honor to be here and uh, to uh, spend some time considering how we can reimagine everything and why we need to and might uh, be in that process already. Uh, and doing so through introducing what we're going to call the, the five C's of, of creative innovation. So uh, uh, I think um, to get us started, I, I just want to um, acknowledge that uh, we sometimes think of these tools uh, that we take with us on a journey as new things that we need to acquire. And indeed, sometimes they are but sometimes they are tools we have within us that are free and accessible at our disposal that we just need to excavate and then cultivate. And I'd suggest that the tools of creative innovation are among those within us that we can encourage each other to, uh, to, to bring out. So um, I, I think with that, we'll go to uh, the next slide. Um, and uh, let me share this creative service announcement because uh, I wanted to be creative and playful in this presentation. So there are a couple creative service announcements that will come up, brought to you by Leonardo. This showcasing some free stickers that will be available and this shows them in their use as well, uh, uh, that were commissioned by Leonardo for, uh, fr from uh, our artists will be made available to the first five lucky participants who uh, follow the QR code, which will be revealed at the end of this talk. So we have a whole bunch of goodies as a thank you for participating in the session on creative innovation. Uh, so we'll hear more about those goodies and that QR code at the end. Next slide. The two core questions that I really want us to be asking each other and ourselves today. What if creativity opens a portal to reimagine everything? What if creativity opens a portal 
to reimagine everything? And how might creativity fuel innovation for all? If creativity is at our disposal, all of us, then how does that open up a portal to reimagine everything and become innovators, each and all of us? As creative pursuits explore new ways of knowing and seeing and being in the world, creativity offers tools that drive innovation as its prime engine and as its heart. And where does this arise? Often in unexpected places and unexpected intersections. And we find this at the intersection of art, science, and technology. And that's where Leonardo comes in. Next slide. So Leonardo works at this nexus of creative practices in technology, science, and art uh, to create playful and productive and mind-blowing platforms for the exchange and cultivation of ideas of, uh, of innovation. And we do this uh, uh, at its best to be impactful. Uh, it, it is not in uh, exclusively creative innovation just to be, to be uh, 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 inventive. Um, Leonardo's vision of art, science, technology, creativity is to be impactful as well. So innovation for us at its best sparks imagination and inspires transformation. Because without its creative heart, this creative intersection of art, science, technology, innovation risks being a purposeless novelty. Just new for the sake of being new, of being clever, efficient, or expediency. But if we are called to reimagine everything as our world is changing so evidently around us and within us, then we need to truly be innovative in the sense of being impactful and trans transformative. Next slide, please. Currently, Leonardo's impact and reach extends to over half a million people through our articles and our content and uh, our, our digital scope. Next slide, please. We uh, engage in our impact through the uh, exchange and cultivation of ideas through our publications platform, new media, and our gathering and convening of thought leaders and emerging inquisitors across the art science technology spectrum it, through uh, residencies, fellowships, and uh, uh, speaker series of, of lasers. Um, which we'll hear more about. But the beginning uh, is only starting now after 52 years emerging as the world's leading organization and publications platform of art, science, technology. Imagine where we can go in collaboration with each other. Next slide. How are we going to do this? How can we cultivate innovation as a force for good? as a force for transformation to reimagine everything. My colleague, Natalie Nixon, whose new book, Everyone Should Buy and Share for uh, a Creative Innovation, the Creativity Leap, defines creativity as our ability to toggle between rigor and wonder. Rigor is that deep digging in analysis and wonder is that, that expansive, sense of awe, the questions of what if. And that's where we, we see the real tools and practice of creativity for innovation by combining rigor and wonder. Next slide, please. So to explore these creative practices and tools, we're gonna share with you today for the first time anywhere in the world, what we are calling the five C's, collaboration, connectivity, content, critique, and contemplation. These five C's are the core creative practices and tools that we've identified across 
all innovation activity in arts, science, technology, and our hybrid interdisciplinary integrated practice through Leonardo and the Leo sphere. So to explore these five Cs, collaboration, connectivity, content, critique, and contemplation, Leonardo has partnered with ASU's University Design Institute to showcase the amazing work of five exemplars, individuals who from Leonardo's world of misfits, masters, and maestros exemplify these creative practices and tools, those that you might have within you or cultivate to bring with you on your innovation journey. I want to share that these are rough cuts and this is a preview premiere of short excerpts from longer uh, films uh, with each of these five exemplars. The first one we're gonna look at is uh, uh, the, the creative practice of collaboration. And before we, we see that brief video, um, I'm delighted to introduce to you, we'll be hearing from Athena uh, Aktipis. Um, Athena is an ASU professor uh, who is the founder of Zombified Podcast uh, and the director of the Interdisciplinary Cooperation Initiative and the co-director of the Human Generosity Project. She's going to, in uh, sharing with us in this excerpt about collaboration, uh, uh, give us insight into um, the thinking behind the collaborative effort of Zombified and the Zombie Apocalypse Medicine um, Meeting. Um, so uh, I'm delighted to bring to you the first uh, video excerpt from the five C's. And I also do a lot of work in sort of, um, you know, science communication um, with my podcast, Zombified, and with the zombie apocalypse medicine meeting. And um, my goal with a lot of those activities is to actually create a space that um, both allows for the public to engage with science and scholarship, um, but also create a space for interdisciplinary interactions around questions like, how do we deal with the crisis we're in right now? How do we even think about or contemplate what's going to happen in the future? You know, one thing that I think is really important to acknowledge in our world is like just how busy everybody is right so people like i mean everybody's plates are already full right so like putting another thing on someone's plate that they have to pay attention to and respond to like you know oftentimes that feels like a burden and i think one of the things that sort of you know creativity in the arts and storytelling add is like okay well you know this isn't another thing that you need to do as part of work this is a place to play. This is a place, you know, where you can bring all of the other things that maybe, you know, you're, you're thinking about, you're worrying about because of the crazy times that we're in right now. And like, those can come to the table. Like it's a, it's a space that is more open. Um, and I think that offers um, a, a place for fun, a place for, um, you know, engaging in a, a, a way that it, that, includes like the whole person as opposed to just the brains and i mean i love brains don't get me wrong but um you know there's uh there's the sense that um you're you're invited in your entirety to participate in this creative process there are so many fascinating things in the fields that we study 
Um, yet many of the meetings that we go to kind of hide that intrigue, the, you know, amazing mind blowing things about science and medicine and, you know, other topics um, in, in jargon and, you know, in a, um, you know, or, or just in a meeting that is not accessible to a broad audience um, more generally. And, um, and, and, the idea came up of, you know, well, what if we make it uh, a meeting about the zombie apocalypse and then use that as a way of sharing these things that we think are really cool and fun and mind-blowing, um, but within a platform that is inherently more accessible and that, you know, creates a frame that invites people to play. I'm not going to be too critical of academic meetings, but you know, like oftentimes they're, they're not necessarily about creating a space for interaction. They're more creating a space for one person to deliver their message. And, and we wanted to, you know, create a space that was more interactive and um, that really delivered these, you know, cool pieces of information in a much more accessible way. So uh, moving from um, this uh, wonderful exemplar of uh, uh, collaboration, we're going to look at some examples of creative collaboration in practice. So in addition to the uh, zombie apocalypse medicine meeting that you see here, and I put in the chat, uh, it's a, a great, another great gift item would be to uh, uh, buy Athena's new book. Uh, um, and I wanted to uh, augment her work with um, the context of other collaborative activities. Uh, ASU and Leonardo has launched this semester the Imagination Fellowship in partnership with ASU's Center for Science and Imagination. And the three fellows who were selected uh, to participate in this virtual fellowship have become collaborators and uh, have engaged in peer mentorship while um, pursuing their work. They were selected as three out of 249 applicants from 75 countries to spend eight weeks virtually working together and with mentors and protégés on new media ways to imagine social change and uh, alliance with the, with the uh, sustainable development goals. Um, as we speak, in the next two days right now, their work is featured on UNESCO's uh, Futures Literacy Labs. This will be a link to one of the great goodies that we'll be giving away at the uh, end of this talk uh, through the QR code. Uh, and their work is, is gorgeous. They'll also be speaking at uh, uh, a laser uh, Leonardo art science evening rendezvous a, a salon in January to share their work out with the ASU community. We also have here uh, an example of collaboration with a group online exhibition that we were one of a dozen organizations from around the world to sponsor. We link that pulled together uh, artists from around the world creating original net native meaning uh, internet originated artworks that uh, responded to the closing of galleries and exhibition spaces in China earlier this year with COVID-19. Um, we pivoted and collaborated to bring new work to the world in, in, this, in this creative way. Uh, next slide, please. The network of Laser hosts the uh, Leonardo Artist Science uh, Evening Rendezvous, Rendezvous uh, Salon Series is now in 47, uh, hosted by 47 cities around the world uh, and locations including ASU, which is just launched this fall, hosted by Pam Winfrey. Uh, and this creates a constellation of uh, collaborative communities who, who provide this platform to think out loud uh, with each other and present new ideas and uh, creative innovation. Next slide. Our partnerships and collaborative endeavors 
include uh, over 15 initiatives uh, university-wide across ASU. We are honored and very excited about our work with groups at, such as the Humanities Lab, Global Futures Lab, um, terrifically uh, honored to be affiliated with both Herberger, uh, Herberger's Arts, Media and Engineering um, School and the School for the Future of Innovation and Society, now part of the College of Global Futures. Uh, in addition, our partnerships uh, nationally and internationally include working with uh, MIT Press, who publishes our award-winning uh, journals and books and uh, digital uh, publications. Um, next slide, please. The next video we're going to be looking at for the five, uh, the second of the five C's, looks at creative connection and communication. And we'll be hearing from Timothy Summers, our colleague from the University Technology Office, who is executive director of the Third Horizons Initiative. He's also one of the leading uh, thinkers in the world on uh, the hacker's mindset and uh, is known for um, his, his work on how hackers think. He'll be sharing a little bit of that with us in uh, this, this excerpt from his talk on connection and creative connection and communication. You can play the video. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, for so long, you know, really the attention has been on the bad, the sort of bad actors in the hacker space and, and not the uh, cutting edge thinkers, you know, the Elon Musks, you know, the, 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 you know, there's a whole line of inventors and creators, you can go all the way to Tesla and, and before and, and identify sort of these patterns of the uh, sort of the hacker's mindset being there. It, applying things and, and questioning ways that things were designed and asking why were they designed that way. And, and you know, I think that really the connecting humans, um, you know, I, I think that we've gotten to this place, the, the idea that we even have to have the conversation around how do we, you know, connect more to humanity is something that I find perplexing in and of itself because we are human. Um, and so there is an, um, there's an interesting, um, there was an interesting school of thought. I remember uh, doing my research and having a number of close colleagues who, who we were all thinking about, uh, you know, really sort of this idea of the intersection of art, science, technology, mathematics, engineering. What does that look like? Why do we need to have a special agenda for it? Um, and the idea sort of being, well, because for some, at some place, we've sort of extracted these things apart and, and made them separate. And we've had this sort of, uh, you know, silos of technologists sort of working in a bubble and saying, well, this technology sounds great. And it seems like something that people would want to use. Um, but rather where we, we, you know, really are sort of starting to sh shift our thinking. And I think technologists have for quite some time now, and we need to lean into it a lot more, is asking people what they need, asking mm -hmm. people what their challenges are. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'll pick on a technology that I find myself uh, interacting with a lot and you know twitter for example i remember when twitter first you know joined the scene and it was um, people were just using it to, to say hey i'm taking a shower and you know people were saying well, why do i need to know that you're taking a shower and then now if you look at it today we're having these whole conversations around twitter being used as a, as a political platform i mean if you think about it where we've come so in such a period of time just it's like wow this technology just like dropped one day and then now all of a sudden it's and we're seeing that in a lot of places. There's a, um, even been a recent documentary uh, around a lot of the technologists and innovators who created many of the systems that we use in social media, for example. And they're now saying, oh my goodness, when I first built this, I had no idea that the world would use it this way. There are, they're both good and bad stories around things like that. But that's where really sort of, if you look at the spark of sort of where humanity and innovation and technology and all of those things sort of live and where they all come together, it's really finding all of these really weird applications of stuff that we never even, no one ever thought of before. One of the things that I love about uh, Tim's uh, work and uh, cr the creative tool and practice of connection and communication is it's not simply translating uh, uh, science or tech through uh, artistic means. We're not, 
we're not exclusively storytellers. We're storytellers, but also uh, we're, we're creative builders. And the connection of creative connection is in, in uh, uh, branching uh, uh, through and building bridges across uh, previously siloed divisions. Um, we do this through our partnerships and we do this through our creative thinking. Um, we are uh, working with Tim and uh, University Technology Office in partnership now to explore uh, uh, access to lifelong learning and experiment with um, new kinds of um, digital identity. Uh, in our talk with Tim, we also, um, uh, he, he made reference to work of Wafa um, Bilal, uh, a, a, an incredible artist who was featured in, in Leonardo, whose work um, uh, uh, you can read more about uh, through Leonardo and, and online, um, uh, sought to experiment with how we connect through digital interface and how that moves us to connect our humanity with each other from what might have begun as a, a domestic tension to uh, hearkening back to Athena's work, the interdisciplinary cooperation uh, and human generosity. Uh, Leonardo has partnered in our publications with organizations including Art Nodes and Sciland uh, across ASU. We're beginning to um, work with communication and connection here with uh, multiple ASU Now articles, a feature in ASU Thrive, a talk with Between Classes and with Stephen Tepper, uh, and uh, uh, digital um, culture uh, series talk with uh, 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 arts, media, and, and, and engineering um, school. Next slide, please. Our pilot publications in the coming year um, will build on partnerships we've already begun to uh, share our work in English, now additionally in Spanish, in Russian, uh, both of which are, are coming up with multilingual partnered projects and publications and coming up uh, very soon uh, uh, in Chinese as well. We're also expanding to look at art uh, catalogs and publications and experimental new technology platforms. Next slide. The third C we're gonna look at is creative content. And the exemplar we're going to um, hear from in this, in this rough cut excerpt is uh, our friend Lance Garavi. Lance is the associate director of the Interplanetary Initiative, an interdisciplinary artist himself, and uh, a professor with the Herberger Institute. Uh, he's going to share with us his experience in creative content generation, genera generating that integrates arts and science and technology through a, a project he did called Beneath. Uh, and we can play that video now. Uh, let me talk about a project I did, uh, another uh, collaboration with the School of Earth and Space Exploration um, uh, called Beneath. Um, uh, the, the, the show we created was uh, about the, the dynamics of the Earth's deep interior. And, and one of the big steps I think I took with, with this was really trying to blur the line uh, uh, between artist and scientist. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was, I was working with um, uh, seismologist uh, Ed Gennaro, um, uh, petrologist um, uh, Christy Till, and astrophysicist Patrick Young. And all of them were not only involved in uh, helping, helping shape the content and informing uh, the, the science that was in the show, but they were artistic performers. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, Ed Gennaro, in addition to being this genius uh, 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 seismologist, and by seismologist, that means someone that studies the vibrations in the, in the earth. Um, he is a, uh, uh, a bass player and quite an accomplished bass player. He, he, uh, he has a band and he tours the region, etc. Uh, one of the things we made uh, for the show was uh, we took all of this 
seismological data from um, uh, uh, these seismographs that were arrayed all over North America. Uh, terabytes of, of numbers to produce a three-dimensional um, model of the Earth's interior and the, the structures within the Earth's deep interior, everywhere from the, the Earth's crust uh, down to the, the, the Earth's core. So we created a piece of software uh, that hooked this model up to Ed's bass guitar uh, and allowed him to basically play his data on his guitar. So the, the notes that he was playing were uh, keyed to certain um, uh, uh, data within the model. Uh, certain uh, uh, wavelength data within the model. So depending upon the notes he was hitting, it would uh, uh, light up different parts of the Earth's interior uh, according to certain uh, parameters of the, uh, basically the velocity that the wave was moving through that point of the Earth. Um, and and the, the wave that is moving is a vibration that is exactly like the vibration of his bass guitar. So this was for Ed um, a completely new way of experiencing and visualizing and interacting with the data that he works with as a scientist. But suddenly he was doing it through an instrument that represents his other, th this other aspect of himself, the, the, the artist that he is. Um, and and it was it was just a, a a really special and exciting way for not only Ed as a scientist to experience uh, uh, the science that he works with, but for audiences as well. And moving from uh, the creative content uh, in the exemplar showcase to uh, creative content in in practice through these examples. I want to first highlight uh, ongoing work of Lance Garavis with the Interplanetary Initiative and his Port of Mars initi uh, initiative and game, which is beautiful and wonderful. So check that out. Uh, with Leonardo, we are, uh, we are introducing in the coming year um, a, a new initiative called Cryptech Incubator that is an outgrowth of the successful Recoding Cryptech exhibition that we joined in sponsoring with colleague organizations. Cryptech Incubator received a half million dollar uh, grant from California Arts Council with whom we're partnering to Im imagine led by, for, and with artists from the uh, disability community, how we can reimagine technology through the creative lens uh, to include all people across all, disabil uh, all abilities and disabilities and how that enriches and teaches us to uh, learn to, to reimagine our technology. In addition to uh, the Cryptech um, uh, initiative, uh, we right now are experimenting in partnership with uh, National uh, Academy of Sciences and others uh, a initiative called Art at the Science, which is an, a social media engagement with uh, generating creative content inspired by the scientific content of the, uh, uh, of the Geo Geophysical Union, American Geophysical Union, AGU conference happening right now and opportunity first brought to our attention by our colleague Lance Garavi. For ASU also right now, uh, for our commencement, um, because we cannot be together in person, we are together in uh, spirit and heart and creativity. We've generated in partnership with Meteor Studio and our uh, visiting artist, my husband partner, Bill Ayton, uh, an initiative from the School for the Future of Innovation in Soci and, and in Society and um, uh, uh, Arts Media and Engineering from Herberger, called Resilience Rising, a digital tribute for graduating students who can uh, receive their digital tribute through a free app online and then uh, activate this, 
this tribute wherever they are as a precursor to a digital augmented reality uh, work we anticipate building on campus in the future. Next slide, please. And one more creative service announcement as a reminder, we'll be sharing specially selected content among the goodies uh, in your QR code provided at the end of this session that were identified by our editorial director who hand uh, selected five um, articles to be uh, shared for free from Leonardo that relate to each of our five exemplars and the five C's. Next slide, please. The next uh, uh, and fourth of the five C's we're looking at is with the exemplar Liz Lerman talking about creative critique. Liz is a professor at the uh, at ASU and um, a recipient of the MacArthur Genius Award. She's just received uh, another grant for her uh, current project Wicked Bodies and uh, uh, is also featured in um, Innovation Week by uh, her work she'll be sharing or, or perhaps share, has shared, we can see on online on uh, Atlas of Creative Tools. Um, and she'll be talking a little bit about creative critique, not as an afterthought to reflect on creative work, rather as an intrinsic part of the creative process through uh, the critical response process, CRP. We can play that video, Seth. I do have a, a filter in that first step, which I encourage people to try. And this gets to an earlier question you asked me, which is to filter out the negative, the things that make you, um, that you didn't like. It's not that you're not going to address them, you are going to address them. You don't lead with them. Most critique leads with what's not working. And I don't know why that is. I really don't. But more importantly, the act of filtering, of noticing if this is making me uncomfortable, then maybe I don't want to tell you this right off. This is a useful skill for yourself. You asked earlier, what's it, how, how do we treat our own selves humanely? I like to say to people, you're getting ready to do something creative. How fast are you negative about your own skill? How fast are you on your own case? How soon do you judge yourself? And most people will say, before I even sit down, I'm saying this practice of filtering lets you pra literally practice, not now, but later. That's a really good thing. You, you, that's an interesting thing. You're going to critique me with it. Not now. Right now, I'm in this other mode. I really think it's essential for creative work. It's like divergence and convergence. It's like you want to have that those moments where you're wide open and you want to have those moments where you're, where you're asking yourself to converge and say, no, not this, not this. I want to be good at both of those things. Most people try to do them. Most people do them at the same time. It doesn't work when you do them at the same time. You need to be able to be open and then you need to be able to actually close in on yourself. And you can do it fast so it feels like they're happening practically at the same time, but they're not. And that's one of the first skills in this first step is learning how to, wow, be open. This is meaning, this is meaning, that was a problem over here. And as I said, in that year when I interviewed lots of people, what is it about your relationship with some people that lets you hear anything from them? They will always say, well, they have my back. They're really interested in, um, in the long haul. You know, there are all kinds of words like that that make um, this first step is like a, um, well, it's a practice for developing that even if you're with a stranger. It begins to build that trust. So then the second step is the person who's made the work asks the questions. Let them go first. What's on their mind? What's troubling them? And the, again, there's a filter and the filter is the responder can say, positive, negative, they can be, you know, they have to be truthful, of course, but they have to stay on topic. You don't get to change the subject. So if I ask you, you know, what do you think about um, the, the, how I did this scientific equation in movement, you can tell me it worked, you can tell me it didn't, but you can't say, oh, well, the equation's fine, but I, I, I didn't like the way you, you did your hair or something like that. I, you don't change mm -hmm. the subject. And it turns out that if you really believe someone's going to stay on, on topic with you, 
you will dive down to the doubts and worries that you have, turn those into questions, and it's amazing, you get most of the work done. Well, Liz Lerman is, is a constant source of inspiration uh, uh, and inspires us to, to bring our creative critique in practice, to reimagine everything as a tool of innovation. Um, uh, two examples I want to highlight here. One, uh, another way you can experience creative critique is through Leonardo's partnership with the Lumen Prize uh, that this year is presented with an online uh, exhibit uh, platform. We'll be sharing the links to that at the end as well. And uh, the Lumen Prize for Art and Technology that really showcases the best of the best new material around the world in uh, creative um, uh, 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 content is a, a great example of creative uh, critique in practice because the process of, of curating is asking those questions, critically uh, uh, analyzing and selecting those that are most inspiring and important. We've uh, innovated a new kind of platform with new art city and created digital pavilions to experience interactive, uh, interactively the prize-winning uh, exhibits through uh, Lumen Prize. We've also partnered with the Humanities Lab at uh, ASU to initiate a new series of Humanities Labs, we're calling Leo Labs, that'll be launched in uh, fall 2020. Uh, and they apply an art science lens to the critical questions that the Humanities Labs ask uh, and uh, uh, look at those questions through an art science lens, employing these five C's uh, critical tools. The uh, tagline for Humanities Lab, there are no easy answers. Um, uh, is the corollary to the complicated questions we need to be asking ourselves to reimagine everything. Uh, we'll be launching a precursor collaborative course this spring, which uh, you can view and sign up for with an art science COVID response that will be co-taught this spring as a humanities lab with Leland Hartwell and Annie Hale and myself. Next slide, please. Our final video we're going to share is with Grisha Coleman, an interdisciplinary artist herself, who will be uh, sharing with us some of her experience in creative contemplation. Um, uh, uh, Grisha is uh, also with the Herberger Institute, has just um, won a, a support from the NEA for her current project, Movement Under Commons. Uh, and uh, we're very fortunate to have her share some of her experience and insight on creative contemplation. We can play that video. So. I have multiple backgrounds in sort of literature and semiotics, but also um, as a professional dancer and also in electronic music, so composition. So it's a weird mix of stuff. Um, what that meant, though, as being a dancer, is that um, the creative contemplation was, in a kind of way, there's a build, there's a build-in, and um, the work that that I've done, a lot of the work that I've done, and a lot of the work that that you do as a dancer, as opposed to sort of, you know, in a very very broad stroke, as opposed to like a visual artist who's making objects outside of themselves, you know, time-based artists have to deal so much with their own physicality, with their own bodies. And um, dancers in particular are working, they're working with, with interiority. That's a, that's a way that I think about it now. And so finding methods or practices of interiority for for multiple reasons, for creative reasons, but also for um, for for health, meaning um, so you don't get injured, so you can continue to do what you do without um, without 
with greater uh, sort of transformation and not so much wear and tear in the way that athletes might or, or, or professional um, musicians. Yeah. So a lot of the work that I've done since I've been at ASU is to try and um, piece together, connect, make bridges with uh, the, 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 the physical practice world, the, the, the physical aesthetic world, the, the, the creative making ma makers world with uh, the worlds of more what I might call more traditional um, technology worlds. So um, which are almost always two dimensional worlds, screen based worlds, you know, um, data-driven worlds. Me coming here and being asked to sort of take on this role was was super challenging. But but that's what the agenda has been like: making links between, if you will, the the software and the hardware of 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 the of the flesh, the software of the flesh with the hardware of the of the tech. Now, I don't usually s separate it like that. Meaning, I don't usually say. Like there's the technology of the body. I'm very, uh, I'm very interested in the technology of the body, and so the contemplative practices are, are, are they're technical to me. <laughs> so, creative contemplation in practice may be very technical, as we embody our creativity. Uh, and uh, also may be very organic as we experience um, uh, uh, our, our contemplation. Um, uh, one way that we do that with Leonardo is experimenting with retreats. So we offer different kinds of retreats for artists and scientists to come together or hybrid creative practitioners to come together through the uh, Jirasi Resident um, Artist Program with Nokia Bell Labs in the experiments in art and technology um, with partners uh, we're developing and, and our, our friends from Dardington Hall in UK and with the uh, Molina House in, in Paris. Um, we've all been in retreat in one way or another uh, in this time of, of COVID uh, and that is offering us a new way of um, reimagining who we are and contemplating who we will become in the world, hopefully to become uh, what we might imagine as more human and more humane. Next slide, please. Leonardo's uh, uh, network is expanding um, and uh, so are our partnerships and our output. Uh, to a sneak peek, if you'd like to hear more about the five C's in practice, um, you can check out the Innovation Week Artist Talk, I'll be engaging in this Thursday, December 10th, together with my partner, uh, Bill Ayton, uh, the visiting artist at ASU. And here's some, a preview of some of the augmented reality um, creative uh, 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 content pieces that we've collaborated on. Next slide, please. Um, one more reminder to check in at the end for our free gifts. Next slide, please. Uh, the creative tools and practices of the five C's, uh, uh, contemplation, critique, content, um, collaboration, and, and co connectivity reflect many values. Three that I wanna just highlight quickly are these values of creative innovation. I believe that these help us reimagine everything. Interdependence, inclusivity, integrity. Next slide, please. Creative interdependence means that, that we recognize everyone counts. We need to do this together. So our creative innovation needs to be collaborative. It is collective. It is about building community. Next slide, please. Our creative innovation requires the value of inclusivity. This means increasing dramatically our access being generous, being genuinely curious. These are qualities that are free and within us and uh, are required of this moment. 
as we are called on and are calling on ourselves and each other to be and become more inclusive as a creative practice. Next slide, please. And finally, we value integrity. Creative integrity implies both humility and audacity. The humility and the audacity to be truly authentic in our creative selves. This is how we will reimagine everything. This is how we will ensure that innovation is not only inventive, but it's impactful. Next slide, please. We know that creativity is among the top five skills sought by executives, according to the conference board. Each of these five C's of our creative practice reflect specific business skills that we need to be uh, cultivating, teaching, and learning through higher ed and beyond. Next slide, please. Finally, I want to thank everyone for joining us today and in appreciation for your participation. We will be sharing with you um, some goodies, including these uh, free uh, articles hand-selected for the five C's of creative innovation uh, that will be in the, in the QR code on the next slide. There it is. Um, so I encourage everyone to explore all those links here that will be listed for you as well. So you don't have to uh, catch it all down right now. Um, all those people and projects that inspire Leonardo and ASU and our collaboration, all those people and projects that inspire creative innovation so that we might reimagine everything. And I'll thank you there and we can open it up for a few questions. We have a few minutes left. So I'll ask my colleagues to join us and I think we can close the slide. So I have a question for you, Diana. Great. I think a lot of times, at least even in my own experience, I have felt I need to separate my creative self from my technical self, my innovative self, my bringing, you know, this to bear in a work setting or to answer a question. Um, and it's hard maybe to even integrate for my own purposes, the creative with the, the, the more technical. I think we've been so socialized to think of them as being different, as being separate. How would you, um, where should I start? Like, what would you recommend for someone trying to learn these ways of, of kind of mashing up what creative and technology and, and art and humanity, like how would you recommend someone begin? Well, I think we, thank you for that question. It's a great question. And I think that um, uh, we, we, as with most things need to begin where we are. So the, the first thing that I would suggest people do is, is take an inventory, get still and quiet and look at where you are right now before you even need to go outside and do something else, acquire something, um, uh, recognize the integrative value you already have and already bring to your creative and technical side. Recognize that creativity is, as Natalie Nixon asserts, the ability to toggle between our, a, a sense of wonder and rigor. And we have that, we're born with that. Think of any child you've ever, you've ever seen or known. They play in the mud, they touch things, they taste things, they're scientists. And if you ask a room full of kindergartners, how many of you are artists? Every hand goes up because they haven't yet learned this segregation of disciplines that we have constructed and imposed. So uh, uh, the first thing I would suggest you do is is reconnect with what you already have within you, which is that fluid recognition of curiosity and wonder and rigor that demands that we explore. Uh, uh, secondly, I would apply that to your spheres of influence, apply that to your uh, resources of, um, uh, of development. 
So your spheres of influence are, that's your tribe and your community. It's your brain team. It's the uh, safe, the safe uh, uh, group you go to when you wanna um, uh, try out ideas and be risky. And it's the, the accessible group who you need, you feel like you need to impress uh, and you want to uh, do a good job for, and you, you have the audacity to just be your authentic self with them. So explore that, that tier of your sphere of influence, and then also explore your, your resources for development. So check out the resources in Innovation Week, check out the resources across ASU, check out the resources across Leonardo, and the other sources of inspiration that, that we've referenced or that will be referenced throughout this program. And um, challenge yourself to learn something different and apply that lens unexpectedly, apply your creative artistic lens to scientific material, apply an inquiring scientific mind to creative work. No, thank you. I love the, the, the call to to be audacious, to, to have the audacity to um, believe that you can bring something unique and, and creative to a problem. That's uh, an inspirational way of looking at, at the world. Uh, we do, one, oh, go ahead. Just one way that we can you know, be uh, uh, audacious and accessible, in addition to checking out the other offerings of Innovation Week is you know, right now, check out what, what, how we're exploring uh, this, this mashup of art science through Lumen, through the uh, uh, Art of the Science at AGU, through the upcoming Cryptech, through Leo Labs, through the fellowships presented at the, uh, on the UNESCO platform with UNESCO Futures Literacy. There's so much available and accessible happening right now. Yes, and thank you all for posting so many amazing resources. I hope everyone is taking advantage of those. And I'm just going to highlight again that the first five folks who visit that QR code are going to get some amazing uh, stickers and some access to materials that are truly inspirational. Uh, we do have one question about the Port of Mars project. Um, has it been completed or is there a way to become involved with that? So, uh, uh, I know that our colleague Lance Garavi, who uh, will have more current um, uh, in, uh, response to that question, um, but I can tell you by going to the Interplanetary Initiative at ASU, you can get involved with uh, the various projects, including Port of Mars. I believe that the significant first stages are complete and there is more to come. Awesome. Thank you for ask, or answering that. Um, and I think you had also um, given us his Twitter handle in uh, our, our chat. So thank you for that as well. Um, so we have another comment from someone reading Natalie Nixon's new book and uh, second that it was wonderful. So just to chime in, another call out for uh, the creativity leap. I encourage everybody to pick that up as well. Um, with that, I believe we are uh, finished. Thank you so much, Diana. This was so inspirational. Um, I can't wait to check out all the resources you posted and provided us with. And um, Seth, if you wouldn't mind going to that final slide, I want to highlight the QR code one last time and encourage everybody to visit this amazing set of resources that have been pulled together. And uh, if you have not yet had an opportunity to sign up for more sessions, uh, visit innovation.asu.edu. And remember to, to show off your learning, claim those badges and post it on your, your LinkedIn account. Uh, and as always, if you're feeling inspired, challenged, engaged, please share on social our uh, hashtag ASU innovation. Thank you all. Thank a wonderful and day. Thank you. Thank you to our colleagues at Leonardo, our colleagues at ASU. Um, thank you, uh, Erica, Ruby, Fritz Smith, Carrie Lopez, and Seth Levine for being here now. Thank you, Diana. I appreciate everything. Have a wonderful Tuesday, everyone.